So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And today is August the 26th, 2021. The topic for this evening is completing the circle. So this, this, um, this topic just came to me. Um, and the reason why is that a few things have been coming to a close for me lately. So the theme of completion is really in the air for me to experience and deal with. And, and I really want to um, have this podcast to be a reflection of what it is that I'm going through. So, so here it is. Um, so what do I mean by things are uh, coming to a close for me? So in case um, some of you don't know, is that just this past Sunday, I did my last career channeling. So I am, um, so for the past couple of years, I think since 2018, um, when career actually appeared in my bedroom and asked me to, to channel, to come, <clears throat> to, to start to channel. I mean, not that I, I have not been channeling. I've always been channeling. It's just that I have been doing channeling just for myself, just privately. So what do I mean by channeling? It's simply to, to be open to communicating with spirit, not my own higher self, but um, other spirits. And I usually would much prefer to um, communicate with high vibrational spirits. And there have been many other spirits um, that have visited me quite regularly for, for over 10 years now. And so I've been just doing channeling for myself, just private channeling for over 10 years. And it was just um, since 2018 when Korea actually wanted and asked me to channel her um, publicly. And so, so it, that really um, kind of puts me on a new journey because I'm a very shy and private person. So I don't like to be in the public I very much. And so um, in accepting the uh, Kriya's request to channel Kriya publicly, actually, it pushed me to con confront a lot of my fears to, to that, that I've been avoiding by staying in the background. And um, I'm not suggesting that I have overcome all of those fears. And that's why um, I don't need Kriya to, to kind of push me and give me a, um, a push to the edge. I'm just saying that, yep, I, I now know a lot of my fears at a much better level. And some of them I have overcome, but some of them I am still um, in the process of going through them. So, and, and then on the day of the, the 22nd, like October 22nd, that was last Sunday, uh, I usually, before I, mm, on the day of the, the, the channeling, I would just, when I do meditation earlier in the day, I would just call in Kriya and just spend some time with Kriya. And then um, that day though, when I, when I did the, meditation in the morning Kriya just you know didn't didn't even take um a lot of time but just came out and say that our contract is over so this will be our last channeling so I was like oh okay interesting um and I think I I was a little bit surprised and not surprised at the same time and and um, I felt a little bit of loss. It's kind of like that. But then I also understand that um, 
I do not want to extend a this to 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 kind of channel to kind of hang on to trying to channel career when it's done because well you know I could but I I I really did not want to um hang on I really want to just okay when it's done it's done let's move on and actually one thing that um Korea said to me and I'm still mulling that over was that so so I kind of um asked uh Korea so what's next now and and Korea just mentioned why don't you channel yourself and I was like okay when I check in with I was like well you know I am nobody who who would want to listen to channeling myself so that was the conversation that I had in my mind and I'm still mulling that over um and so that was the first completion is that um my channeling of career is over and I think um I I kind of completed that circle because I it actually finally it's completed today I consider that completed today because earlier today I actually changed and made made some um comments to change my on my website the page that I had out on um channeling career and just I just kind of shared what it is that um, had happened, and it was like it was. It's out there. It's done, and it's final. And I'm okay, and I'm fine to let it all go, and also to be prepared, be ready for what's next. And then the second completion that I want to mention is that. Um, the second completion is really completion with the inverted matrix. Now I know the inverted matrix um, came down in 2019, but because of the year that we've had um, in 2020, it's like all everything just um, it was upside down, and so initially I was like part of 2020 was really to to get adjusted to all of this strange things strangeness that is going on in the world and um so i haven't quite i i even though i have been but i don't think i have done too good a job in really letting go of the inverted matrix within myself because um even though the inverted matrix itself as as no longer has any energetic support but we as human beings the 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 the, the wonderful human beings that we are we can actually even when something is no longer energetically supported as long as we still have attachments to the the stories and programs that we have been um, uh, that we have adopted while we were, have been living in the inverted matrix for the last um, ten thousand years and maybe more, <clears throat> is that we have certainly adopted some. Um, patterns some are, are unconscious and some are not so unconscious patterns and so the last um, year uh, and a half really have been for myself is to work on dropping those inverted matrix programs and and so i've been really trying quite hard to break out of the inverted matrix on one hand and then on the other hand I still find that I'm I'm because this has been so unconscious that even though on one hand I have been trying to let it go on the other hand I've been also 
um, still perpetuating some of, of those. And so I've been noticing it more and more. And, um, and I think I was, had a feeling that I was going around in circles, just looking for a way out in, in the last two years. And then I think last week, it was just last week, the energy kind of shifted last week. Sometime last week, I actually felt different. I don't know if um, any of you have had that, that shift or noticed that shift. Is that something has shifted. And for me, what, what really um, I noticed was that I was able to actually start to find my way out of the inverted matrix. It was, it felt like energetically, it felt like that. It's like the, the sea parted and um, where there was, where I was running around in circles been, for the last two years, trying to find my way out and couldn't even um, see what it is that I can't see. And all of a sudden last week that, that shifted and I was able to access more of um, who I am. And so because of that, I was able to really get on with um, letting go of more of those programs and it is still an ongoing process however i i know i know now that it can be done that it will be done um very very shortly it's not going something that's going to be dragged on for another five ten years it's it's probably going to be maybe for another couple of months and and there so I really feel more momentum on doing it. So one of the things that I noticed um, was that before, whereas before, um, there have been different methods that I've I've learned, or that I have been taught how to how to let go of things in the past. For example. Um, doing the process of Ho'oponopono was for me one of the ways that I've, I've learned how to let go of the past. However, um, I still feel that even after I've done the, in the past, even after I've done the Ho'oponopono, I would feel much better for a while and then it comes back. It's, it's, it's like there's another build up. So, so it's this feeling of not complete yet. And then um, also, I, um, Sipu James also mentioned that is in order to be complete with something is you have to thank, and you have to give thanks. It's the gratitude, this, this um, really heartfelt gratitude is going to do it. So I've actually also used this. And I somehow I find that it's still not quite does it for me yet. And also from um, from Franco, I remember there was this one time I was in, I, I actually had a session with him and we went back to a time when I was um, like, I, it was a past life experience that is, or I would say a past life story that is still um, holding me back in this lifetime. So we went back there. And one of the things that he asked me to do is to, um, after we've done the release and all that, is to go back and reprocess it and to, to kind of um, knowing what I know now after I've done the work, done the release and energetic release with Franco is to knowing what I know after having done the work is to go back and reprocess that memory to give myself the, um, the knowledge and the know-how that I have now 
and give that knowledge and know how to the my alternative self at that moment that that way to reprocess it so i did that and that worked for a while and but it's still something not quite i didn't feel uh, that it's completely done yet however i think because of this energetic shift that i felt um last week that um this i would say the this week i was able to when i go back to reprocess is that i was able to really get to the 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 bottom of it um so what i'm trying to say is is that regardless of what method that you want to use is that in this new energy because we we did have a, a shift a big shift in energy um last week so if something that you have done before that if at all you feel that there is something that is not complete yet to not give up hope is that in this new energy if you just go and do the work again in this new energy that you are going to get so much more because that was what i experienced um since the shift of of that of last week so and i also did something a little different as well is that before i went back before i go back in time to reprocess um a memory whether from this lifetime when i was um at a younger age or from a previous lifetime before i go back to to do the release work and the reprocess the first step i did which made a difference as as far as i can tell is to really be fully immersed and embody myself all of myself so before i i start to do any um any spiritual and and release work what i did was first step is to fully embody myself meaning that i would drop into um my body and i invite my entity my soul and the highest version of my highest self that that i can fully embody in the moment to really feel all parts of me being present and accounted for so that energetically i feel so i can feel so much more empowered and when i'm in this empowered state then i go to to do the um the second step is to really go back to a traumatic experience and find out what it was that i needed or the that version of me needed in that moment in order to discreate the story of the trauma because each trauma we um from the trauma's point of view we come up with these these stories either i'm not good enough or i'm not powerful enough or i'm not knowledgeable enough whatever the that that those stories are we come up with those stories and we come up with another way to um overcome that trauma is for example what i uh, um it could be is that i would um let's say if i had a uh, a re- uh, a bad relationship with somebody who, who for example dumped me then it was traumatic for me and so what i the stories i i may make up is that oh i'm not good enough um so i should settle for 
someone less than so that I would feel that I am good enough or maybe I should just um, not have relationship forever anymore because I don't ever want to feel that traumatic feeling again so whatever the 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 stories and the the um, and the coping mechanism that you have come up for yourself in order to survive that is really something that you came up with at the moment when you were traumatized so probably not the best um way to deal with it so when you go back in time with when you fully empowered yourself having all your your all parts of yourself entity soul higher self body all of those intact when you go back and look at a past traumatic experience you have a lot more tools because when you had that um traumatic experience you there are some tools that you've been missing so the point of going back to a traumatic experience is that now that you have lived through that traumatic experience you are still alive today and so you have a lot more skills you have a lot more tools so when you go back is to really go not going back to be that um the disempowered state that you were at the time is to actually go back to that scenario but as the empowered person that you are and really look at and really feel what it is that you needed to to take care of in that moment and that may include that you may have to feel some feelings that you're not comfortable to to feel but because you're in an empowered state you are much better able to um, go through those experience and really feel the those experience without taking it on so you actually can just be in those emotions and know that huh that's just an emotion that i felt at the time and now i want to fully experience it without all the the stories without the disempowerment and so when you do that it actually you would be able to look at what it is that you don't see at that moment that could have you could have avoided or you could have um, made a better choice you could have come up with a better coping mechanism and you could really understand what was that experience for because we our soul bring these experiences for us is really not to torture us even though it may felt torturous at the time but it's the the intent of the soul is really for us to see something whether it is a belief or whether it is um something that we need to learn whether it is something that we need to a skill that we need to 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 build on so our soul wanted to show us something so when we can go back and revisit the traumatic moments when we are fully empowered as the fully empowered person that we have become today then we would be able to get all the the, the things that we need to learn or to know in order to discreate the trauma and when I say this create the trauma, that does not mean that um, the event, you can actually erase that event so it never happened, but that you can still have that event. So things could still have 
um, worked out the way it worked out. It's just that you don't have to keep that label that that was a traumatic experience for you. It's bad It's whatever the stories that you have attached to it is that you can look at that experience and get all the learning and get all the, 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 the things that you need to know in order to discreate the, the stories that you have about that trauma. So that's the second step. Second step is, first step is to fully empower yourself. And the second step is to go back to a traumatic experience as your fully empowered self to learn and to know what it is that you needed to see or your soul needed you to see for that um, in that traumatic experience to let go of the stories of trauma and then the third step, if you're brave enough, is to actually go and visit other subsequent events that feels connected to the first tra traumatic event and reprocess everything again. Because when you, when you come across a trauma, it created a, an imprint so that it is more likely than not that there will be similar events which... Um, would be attracted to you because you have that imprint in you. So now that you have went back and reprocessed the original traumatic event, you, in order to really clean up is you have to go back in and visit subsequent events that feels connected to the first event and reprocess everything and see all the subsequent events from all points of view. So not just from your point of view, you also see it from um, the other people that are involved, see it from their point of view as well. And then when you have reprocessed those events from the point of view of the fully empowered self, the fully empowered being that you are doing this process, when you do that, then you can actually um, really see how that first event has actually impacted you. And when you can see the impact, you can actually um drop the impact as well so that is really the clean up work that needed to be done in order for for myself anyways to to really drop the inverted matrix from my own unconscious mind because i know that i have definitely adopted some beliefs and also from my looking at my family as well, my, my parents certainly has adopted some of those. And when I am doing my own work, I'm actually cleaning up um, their, cleaning up their mess as well, because when I can clean up my own self, the, 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 the ripple effect for myself, I actually can drop into a much um, holistic and organic and natural part of me. So I'm really reclaiming the part of me that is um, original. That's how, who I am when I, come in to this incarnation and be able to really recover who I truly am naturally. So, so that's why I call this, this topic as being completing the circle, because I am 
going through this and because we are all together in a in a community so if i'm going through this then chances are some of you may be going through this as well um consciously or unconsciously i think um collectively we are all going through that as well is that we are we've actually completed the old story and we are stepping into the a new um, beginning so that's why there was that big shift in energy but before we go too far into the into creating our new story and and um, playing in this new environment is if we can take the next couple of months to really do the clean up um, making use of the the tremendous boost of energy that we have right now to do that clean up to um, even though the, the past two years we've been doing clean up as well, but I do feel that because we of that big shift in energy that it is actually, we can do another level of the clean up. And it's, and that's, and then once we've done that big level of clean up and we, really start to take away all the the dirt from our own unconscious mind to clean all that up so that the what's truly inside the the real personality the real winnie or the real spirit that is um, coming to earth to have that winnie experience would be able to shine through much more clearly and so that's that's what um that's one of the ways that i'm preparing myself and also the other way to prepare myself to start this new completely new um, journey, new movie, <clears throat> is to allow myself the, the time to play. I think that's why um, career, the channel in career has, it has to stop. That's why the, that contract is concluded because I'm, I need to make room for something new to come through or what new things to come through? I don't know, but I want to give myself more time to allow something new to come through, to really play. And um, so some of the, the things that I've been playing with, I, I already mentioned that I, I, I really like to create mandalas. So the, um, what you're seeing now uh, in terms of the, the the visual background that we that i have displayed now is one of the the mandalas that i have created very recently so i'm just playing around with it it's i there's so many things that i still um need to refine but but you know it's it's allowing myself to start to play to be creative, to not judge myself for, for any of my creation and to not have a, any expectation. I'm creating these Mandela's. I have no idea what is going to come out of it. I just know for some reason that I'm attracted to doing it. So why is that the case? I have no idea. I just know that I need to follow that. I just have to follow that creative um, impulse that I have. And that's also the other thing I want to share with all of you is 
is to also allow yourself to do that. Because um, whether you realize it or not, the old normal is not coming back. It's never coming back. And, and even if it could come back, you don't want it. You're ready for something new. And, um, and human beings don't like new. <laughs> we like old things. We like our habits. We like to um, keep rehashing the old things. But now the best way to prepare yourself for what's coming next is to really allow yourself to start to incorporate something new in your life to embrace the new things in your life whether that be um, taking up a new hobby like making mandalas or going out and making new friends or going out and um, trying something new whatever it is that your soul um, calls you to do or it's the opportunity come somehow is in front of you to try something new if something like that has happening um, has, is, has come into your life or is um, <clears throat> or if you are ready for some of that to come in your life is to really call it in as well so those are the two major things i want to share with all of you this evening the first thing is is really about the 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 sign of the times now is really to complete the circle um, is a good question is to ask yourself have you um, do you feel that you have really let go of the inverted matrix and what other things that you can do to further this process and i've also shared with you a process um, which I'm going to, of course, call this process completing the circle process. And the, the steps are, I'm just going to recap, the, the steps are first, first is to really fully embody yourself, really drop into yourself and call in all of you, the highest vibration of you, of your highest self that you can embody in this physical vessel that you have in this moment mm -hmm. is to do that, to fully embody yourself, fully empower yourself, and then go back to look at a traumatic experience that seems to be still um, running, still running your life that story is still coming up for you and you would know what it is because um if you feel that you are going around in circles in in some areas of your life you know that it's because there is something underneath that is keeping that that pattern um, to repeat itself then just ask to go to the first um, traumatic experience that you can remember. And it does not have to be a, a past life. It most of the time is, is probably um, good to just start with this lifetime because even if it's a past life, it will show up somehow in this lifetime it will show up as an energy signature as that. Um, and if you just ask, then you, you would be shown those things. And so go back and reprocess 
those traumatic events, not as the disempowered person that created those trauma, but as the fully empowered person that you are today, so that you can go in there to give the the version of you that was that lived through that, to give that version of you all the 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 inner knowing, all the energetic support, and all the wisdom that you have when you are fully embodied to go back and reprocess and really learn what it is that you needed to know that you needed to shift in order to take back your own power in order to fully empower yourself because usually when we go through something traumatic it's because we have somehow given our power away to the event, the person's a combination of both. So when we go back and we're fully empowered um, person as you are, you would be able to think of a better way to look at that incident and to let go of any stories that have been that you have created that is perpetuating that pattern and then once you've done the first traumatic incidents then is to actually just go and revisit similar events that uh, subsequent to the the original um, traumatic event and just dismantle the whole uh, the like all of that train of stories so that you can let the whole pattern go completely so that's that's the first thing that i shared and the second is to really empower yourself to play no matter how old you are how young you are is to allow yourself this opportunity to be um, different. Allow yourself to be different from who you were two years ago and to try something different while you're having fun trying new things because trying new things does not have to be intimidating and if it feels intimidating intimidating at first then um, make it so that it is not intimidating give yourself permission to just try things out without any expectation give yourself permission to fail um, and have no expectation of what may or may not come come about. Like, don't give yourself the 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 burden of oh, I have to let's say create a new um, way of making money because the old way of making money is gone. That's way too much. Uh, that's way too much expectation is to just allow yourself to play, to learn new things. Um, learning doesn't mean that you have to, you know, pay thousands of dollars to learn a new skill. It's to just go and look for, because there are lots of people on YouTube and, and on uh, a, a lot of other platforms as well, that for no money or very little money that you would be able to experience and get the um, benefit of someone else's experience and to really try it on for yourself to see if this is something that you may enjoy to pursue more of without any expectation as well to just have fun so try something that is like um 
like creating these mandalas is I looked for a program that I can just download um, on my on my cell phone. It does not cost me anything. And actually it's, I find it beautiful. It's not, it's, it's not as flexible as I would like it to be, but I still have no um, expectation. I'm just playing. And once I start to have some idea of where I want to go with it, then I can start to step up is to get more serious. And maybe the next step for me is to look for some program that will may cost me some money that, uh, but will give me more precision, will allow me to, to have more control over what it is that I can create. So, so as to just give yourself the permission to start playing with as little commitment as possible, as little expectation as possible, and to just play while you're still doing the other things that is going to put food on the table and provide you with all of the other things, but still give yourself an outlet to pursue your passion. And once you, you really start to fan that passion, then one day, if this is really what um, your soul is intended for you to do, then one day opportunities will start to come along for you to be able to take whatever it is that started out as um, a small side um, hobby to make it out to something that is going to give you full-time employment, but you don't know and no need to know. So what it is that you can do today is to just start something. I remember um, today I, I actually read a, just give an example is, um, I actually read on, um, uh, I think it was Facebook. I forgot where it is that that I read it, but anyways, this this person was. Um, I think she was as. Um, I think she was a marketing in marketing or or some. I forgot what what her corporate job was, but she was um, she was working from home for the last last year, almost two years now. So she was doing that working from home. And so she really felt bored because she couldn't, a lot of things that she couldn't do, she can't really um, hang out with friends like what she used to do. So she actually took up a new hobby of um, crocheting. So, and she has always loved to crochet hat. So she actually, what she did was she started crocheting these very unique design of hats. And it's um, the unique design is uh, checkered, so checkered board. So it's like red and white, or in, and some of them are blue and white. So all different colors and all different shapes of hats. And it started out as just a hobby. And then she started um, you know, giving them to her friends that she, instead of um, getting together with her friends, she would send them these gifts that, that she has crocheted for them. And her friends actually start to, to really appreciate it and actually friends tell their friends and so on and so on. Actually, she started a sidekick is just from friends is to, um, people started to paying her to knit or actually to crochet them a hat for them. So she started the side gig. And then very recently, she actually got a um, contacted by Hope Renfields 
like a um, really a department store, a, a, a very upscale department store, who is actually looking for um, these local designers with a special, like with, with a story. And so they got wind of her crocheting projects and they actually put in an order like um, an order for I forgot how many uh, uh, maybe about a couple hundreds of hats for so that they can sell it in their their upscale stores and so this actually made her you know, netted her a, a big chunk of money and even though maybe it's not still not her not able to um you know, replace her main job yet this is still so far a sidekick but it's these opportunities like these are really popping up and all because she just play she just started crocheting and then she really loved hats so she followed that and just started to create hats and send it to friends and then friends to tell friends and it all ballooned so that is what what i'm talking about is you never know what this the next part of your life is going to be you never know what's going to happen however the best way to um, encourage new things coming in is to actually give yourself permission to play give yourself full permission to um just try things out without any expectations you can fail and it's still okay and just laugh about it and if you find out that something is a dead end then just go to the next thing that comes up for you and the next thing and if it's something that your soul wants you to pursue then your soul will arrange opportunities to come your way but you never know until you start to be open to new things to come in and this is what the um, the i would say the next while is going to be is to let go of all the the trauma drama stories and open your life up for new things to come in and that's what i would like to share with you today